Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. Uh, we're looking at our course following Christ and we're looking at the church. So if you'd like to turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 38 to 47. And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. With many words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. <clears throat> then they that gladly received the word were baptized, the same day were added unto them about three thousand souls. When they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all the believe all that believe were together and all things common had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favour with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. First of all, what is church? Church is a gathering of God's people who have been saved by grace. Um, so church is really just people who come together who love the Lord Jesus Christ and fellowship together. Uh, that's really what a church is. So a church can be two people. He says, where two or three are in my name, there I am in the midst. So a church can be two or three people. Uh, it can be five people. It can be ten people, a thousand people. But the main thing is, is that they're believers in Christ, fellowshipping together, uh, serving together, accountable together. That's what a church is, really, okay? And so you need to be in a church because God has designed us to not be loners but to work together. Uh, just like you have bees in, uh, that work in a beehive and, and, and uh, doing all the things that the bees do in a beehive. So the church is like a beehive. It, it, it's got a lot of bees. And we have a king bee and his name is Jesus. But all the rest of us are in his beehive doing what he wants for the hive. And so all of us are part of this great big church. And then there are local churches where individual, uh, where groups of people meet to worship and to praise and to, to, uh, to serve together in Christ. And so the point is this, is that you can't go it alone as a Christian. I've met a lot of people today who are going it alone. They don't want to get involved in church. Now I understand that because some churches can be controlling and but that doesn't mean to say that you can't meet with other Christians. It doesn't mean to say that you can't have a Bible study group or a home group where there are a few of you together. That is church. Okay? Church is God's people meeting together that's church so if there's two or three of you in a house that's church okay and you need to be meeting with people you need to be meeting with god's people because it's like a <clears throat> it's like a piece of coal in a fire keeps warm take the piece of coal out of the fire or the piece of wood out of the fire and it goes cold and if you're a christian and you're not with god's people you won't keep on fire you will die out spiritually eventually all right so, I, what, what I would say um, <clears throat> is, if you're not in a church, to pray to God and ask Him to show you what church to go to, okay? Um, and this is what a church should look like. It says, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. 
So a church has to be a church that's got sound doctrine, sound teaching. If a church doesn't believe in the Trinity, you shouldn't go to that church. It's not a true church. It's an apostate church. If a church doesn't believe the Bible is the word of God, <coughs> you shouldn't go to that church. If the church believes you're saved by works, not by grace, you shouldn't go to the church because we're saved by grace. Okay? A church has to have sound doctrine, sound Bible-believing teaching. Okay? So if you go to church and they're not teaching the Bible, then that's not a church you, you should be going to. A church should be teaching sound doctrine, teaching the Bible. Alright? Secondly, and fellowship. And they continue steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Fellowship means um, dwelling together, you know, care, caring for one another, um, worshipping God. Um, if a church is not worshipping the true, true, true God, then you shouldn't go to that church. There are some spiritualist churches that are not true biblical churches, not true Christian churches. So it's got to be a church that wants to worship the true living God of the Bible. And it's got to be a people that want to dwell together, care for each other. It says later on they had all things in common. What that means is they really cared. So don't go to a church if there's no love there. If there's no love in the church, love for God and love for fellow man, then that's not a church to be going to. Okay. Doctrine and fellowship, breaking of bread. So a church has got to be having communion. The Jehovah's Witnesses only have communion, I think it's once a year, is it? And only a few people can go to that, to the memorial. That's not true church. True church here is that everybody can break bread. And it's not once a year, it's here it's once a week. Okay? So every believer meets to have communion at least once a week. Or at least once a month. But you, you, everybody is taking communion. That's a true church, okay, to remember the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he died and took our judgment, our sin for us. Then thirdly, prayers. You know, uh, the, a church has to be a praying church. If the church doesn't have prayer meetings and people don't go to the prayer meetings, then it's a dead church, all right? So, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, prayers, and fear came on every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and all things in common, and sold the possession. So there were these signs and wonders. Now I believe the signs and wonders were for a specific apostolic time. Okay, to, to help the church go forward. But there is a truth there that the church is a supernatural church it's a church where God dwells and God does things so if there's no sense of God at work in your church if God's not answering prayer if, if things are not happening in your church then it's a dead church you know if God's not doing things in your church or the church that you go to then it's dead it's not got supernatural power it's not got supernatural life it's dead and you're better off finding a church that's alive. And then they sold their possessions. In other words, they they really lived as a community. And again, I'll come back to this love bit. This is one of the missing things in the church today is this love. People don't really love each other really. You know, going to a meeting and praying and studying the Bible and then everyone going on, that's not real love. Real love is being there in times of crisis, it's being there in times of need and sharing your life with other people. That's what love is. Okay. So, that's what a church should be and you should be looking for a church like that or at least uh, praying that God will lead you to a church like that. Now, I just want to talk about um, looking for a church. So when you go to a church, ask yourself, is this church has this church got sound doctrine? So look at the statement of faith. 
and if it's not biblical then don't go there then ask yourself is the church preaching the word of God is there a lot of Bible teaching and preaching if there's good preaching then that's good is the fellowship is the church really worshipping God worshipping the Lord are the hymns biblical is the worship honouring to God if it's just entertainment or it's just like going to uh, kindergarten or or something then that's no good you want to be worshipping the living God are they breaking bread do they have communion do they really care about each other is there really is God really at work in this church is he blessing this church in some way those are questions that you need to ask now what do you do if there's no church in your area well first of all I don't subscribe to these people who are super critical of the church they say the church is a waste of time I'm not going to the church there are many many good churches around the world today in your country most countries there will be decent churches around um, so have a look around and see what there is now at the same time a lot there are a lot of churches that are failing and the question is what do you do then and I think you should pray that if you really there are a lot of people that don't go to church because it, the issue is with them they're proud and they don't want to submit to leadership they're judgmental they've got some teaching that that sent them off the rails so there are a lot of people around today who don't go to church because they're just either super critical or they have got the wrong attitude or the wrong teaching okay but at the same time there are many genuine people who've been hurt by churches because the churches have been controlling um, or they have failed or they've struggled and they've not had the help and support many people leave churches because they've not felt loved um, and so there are a lot of people in the wilderness well what do you do well I what I would suggest you do is look for churches that that are church plants that are trying to start new churches where where they're trying to get back to the basics and maybe have a look around for them and if you can't find then look for people who are like yourself who are perhaps in exile perhaps in need of fellowship and meet with them and try and plant the church but only do that if it's the last scenario do it very cautiously do it very prayerfully and make sure that you don't do it because you just want to do it okay or you've got a bad attitude or there's issues in your life that you don't want to deal with and you're using it as, as an excuse but if you're pushed into that situation then just pray about it try and get other people of similar mind together and then maybe meet in your house and have a bible study and then see how it goes from there and uh, get yourself trained up in some way make sure you're accountable uh, have get in touch with a pastor or some leaders from an organization or a church that's that that can keep an eye on you and and rebuke you if you go wrong you you need people who can uh, support you if you plant in a church and guide you and make you accountable because if you're not accountable you become a dictatorship um, and uh, get yourself trained up get yourself on courses Bible courses that will help you to to uh, develop uh, a church plan that's my advice uh, for those who, who for some reason genuinely can't seem to get back into the mainstream church okay it happened with John Wesley John Wesley and Whitfield got kicked out of their church and they had to start churches so you know it has happened and maybe some people need to do that alright so don't don't feel that it's not you shouldn't do it if that's all you can do then get on with it but generally speaking um, I would um, try and find a church if you can okay 
uh, an official church, established church that's been around for a while. That's what I would do first protocol. If you need help with church planting, if you need to be accountable, you want someone to keep an eye on you, just let me in touch. I'm willing to um, uh, guide you in your church plant and, and willing to even rebuke you if you're doing things wrong. Um, so, you know, if you want any advice about church planting, you want me as part of your team from a distance to give you advice, I'm willing to do that. But only for people who are genuinely humble, loving, godly, truly wanting to do the Lord's will. There are a lot of people out there who start churches that are hard work, who are just in it for themselves, who've got issues in their own life, and are using church planting to escape from dealing with issues that the church has challenged them on. So don't get in touch with me if you're one of them. But if you're this genuine person who feels that you want to get back to biblical principles and you feel the church has let you down and others feel the same and this is the way you want to go as a group and you need support then get in touch with me and I'll help you um, I'll, I'll provide training for you and support for you if you want okay take care now